Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe. Today we're here to talk about the MakerBot Method and Method X 3D printers. Now, some of you might have had a bit of a history with MakerBot. Uh, there were some issues with their earlier series, the replicator printers. Once they introduced the smart extruders especially, there were some challenges there that kind of turned some people off. Uh, I'm here to tell you that this is not the same kind of a 3D printer. This has been completely re-engineered from the ground up, taking advantage of much of the expertise present within the Stratasys organization uh, since they acquired MakerBot. And uh, they've really introduced some great features. And uh, the company itself has changed quite a lot too. Uh, we have found it to be uh, very different than the MakerBot that we had worked with years ago, and they've made some very positive improvements. So overall, they've, they've given me a lot more confidence in the brand with their latest product releases and the way they're running the organization now. So the one thing that really makes the Method and Method X printers stand apart from other desktop 3D printers is that instead of just using a heated bed, which is common, they have introduced an active heated build chamber. So the whole chamber heats up evenly using circulating hot air. And it allows you to make sure not only your, your prints stick to the bed, but also that you have consistent performance throughout the print, that that heat carries all the way through layer after layer. That gives you better layer bonding throughout the print and that results in a stronger part with better dimensional accuracy. So it's a really nice feature, it leads to very reliable prints even when you're using more advanced materials that are typically very challenging and it allows you to use advanced support materials like the SR30 support, which again came from the Stratasys organization. That's a soluble support material that's compatible with higher temperature materials like ABS or ASA. Uh, you do need a special wash tank with a special cleaning solution in order to dissolve those supports, but it introduces a nice option for people that want to work with those uh, higher grade engineering level materials. The only difference between the method and the method X, this is the method X that you see here, is the temperature limit for the active heated chamber. So with the method printer, the limit is 60 degrees Celsius for that internal temperature, whereas with the method X, that limit goes up to 110 degrees Celsius. And that opens up a wider range of material possibilities for you. So with the method X, you can print in higher temp materials like ABS, ASA, uh, polycarbonate ABS, and uh, that SR30 material that I mentioned, that advanced support material. Those require the higher temperature capabilities of the Method X printer. So the first thing that I noticed when I unboxed this printer is that it is extremely well built. Uh, this thing is very solid, it's quite heavy, and it just feels like it's really solidly built, like it's not gonna have parts breaking or falling off, it just feels very robust. And uh, that has certainly been my experience in using it. It's been very solid, very consistent, haven't had any issues with it. Uh, it just seems to be built out of really high quality components. So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, if you lift off the top cover, you can get access to the extruders uh, and the, the Bowden tubes that uh, feed the film and up to those uh, extruders, the hot ends. And you can replace these um, different uh, extruders depending on the type of material that you're using. We'll take a look at some of those extruder options momentarily. They're very easy to install. The extruders just drop right in there and they get automatically recognized by the printer. You have a nice door on the front that keeps everything nicely sealed. Again, because we have that active heated chamber, we need to keep all that heat in, but it also makes it nice and easy to see what's happening on your print job. The build plate is a flexible build plate, which is just attached on magnets, so it's very easy to pop this out, and then you can just flex the plate and your prints pop right off. It makes it really easy to remove the finished prints. You've got a really nice touch screen here that makes it easy to access everything that you need to set up and configure the printer get it ready to go. The filament bays are down here and these are sealed bays so that they will help to maintain the humidity level of the filaments that you put in here. The filaments, uh, at least the MakerBot brand of filaments, are auto-detecting so they have a, a chip in there that allows the printer to automatically detect the type of material and uh, they remain sealed in these bays again to help control that humidity level and, and keep the filament at its, at its highest quality level. It's very easy to load new materials. I currently have this top bay empty. I'll show you what's involved in loading a material now. Just go to material and load. Now it says to open bay one. I'm just gonna load in a spool of ABS here. And this is really nice because all you do is set the spool in there and then feed this filament into the feed hole here. 
printer grabs it, feeds it all the way in for you. So as soon as it picks that up, you can go ahead and close this bay and the printer takes care of the rest for you. So there are a number of different extruder types depending on the type of material that you're looking to work with. All of these extruders share a common design. As you can see, they have a very long uh, design here, and that's because they extended the, the heated core so that you can really melt materials a lot more efficiently, and uh, extrusion is, is a lot smoother as, as a result of that, even when you're using more advanced high temperature materials. So you have the Model 1 extruder, which is for your sort of lower temperature standard materials, things like PLA, tough PLA, PETG, or nylon. And you have the Support 2 extruder, and this is for PVA. This is for the water-soluble PVA support material specifically. Then you have a Model 1C extruder. This is for composite materials like the uh, MakerBot nylon carbon fiber, as well as any other abrasive materials that they may release in the future. And then we have the MakerBot Labs Experimental Extruder. And this allows you to use a broad range of third-party materials with your MakerBot method or Method X printer, opening up a huge range of printing possibilities. Now, when you put in the Experimental Extruder, you won't mount your spools in the internal sealed bays. And that's a good thing because some of these third-party spools might be different sizes. They might not fit well in those bays. But what they let you do is mount that on the side of the printer. There's a little door that opens up here on the side. And there's two auxiliary ports over here where you can feed those third-party spools in. So you would simply 3D print a spool holder that goes on the auxiliary mount here on the side. You can mount your spool right on the side of the printer. And then they feed right into these auxiliary ports going in through the same Bowden tubes and uh, into the extruders. So all of those extruders that we've looked at so far work in either the Method or the Method X models. The two remaining extruders that we'll talk about next are higher temperature material extruders, and those are only compatible with the Method X or Method X carbon fiber. So you have the Model 1XA. This is for your higher temp model materials, things like ABS, ASA, polycarbonate ABS, and the flame retardant version of polycarbonate ABS, as well as other higher temp materials that MakerBot may introduce moving forward. And then last but not least, we have the Support 2XA extruder, and this is specifically for the SR30 support material, which again is a soluble material, but unlike PVA, which dissolves in plain water, the SR30 requires a wash tank that circulates heated water, and you have an added cleaning agent that helps to dissolve those supports. So you need a little bit more of a specialized setup to work with the SR30 material, but it's a great support material for higher temperature uh, prints uh, with materials like ABS or ASA, et cetera. So as I mentioned, the active heated build chamber is really what makes this printer series unique. And that's important not just because it makes it easier to get consistent print results. It makes sure that your prints stick to the bed and that they don't warp like some of the more advanced materials tend to do. But also it gives you stronger and more dimensionally accurate parts. This printer has really been tuned for dimensional accuracy. And unlike some 3D printer manufacturers that tend to focus on uh, the precision of uh, how accurately they can position the extruders, they talk about terms of you know, positioning accuracy in, in so many microns, MakerBot instead focuses on what really matters, that is the dimensional accuracy of the final parts that get printed. How closely does that part that gets 3D printed match the dimensions of the original CAD model that was used to produce it? That's what we really care about, right? We want our model to match the design that we fed into the printer as closely as possible. And in, a, in my experience, even using more advanced, trickier materials like ABS and ASA, et cetera, parts have been consistently of high dimensional accuracy coming out of this printer along the lines of about 0.2 millimeter accuracy within 0.2 millimeters of the spec in every case that I've seen, sometimes even a little bit better. Uh, I did a little bit of a dimensional accuracy test, as you can see here. This is a part that's available on Thingiverse where you can print out these, these pegs and see where they fit in so that you can identify what level of dimensional accuracy you have. And as you can see here, we're at the 0.2 millimeter uh, mark. And uh, you could even fit the parts into the 0.15 millimeter mark, although it's a little bit tight there. So dimensional accuracy is somewhere in between 0.15 and 0.2 millimeters. 
every other printer that we tested, that we did the same test on, the results came out somewhere at or above this. So a couple of printers came out very close in dimensional accuracy, but most of them fared worse than the method series. So it definitely did perform well in terms of dimensional accuracy. So let's take a look at what that means by looking at some other sample prints here. Um, here's one example of a vacuum hose attachment that was printed in ABS. And what, what this really shows is, again, you have a rather tall object with a lot of layers going up. But because of that active heated chamber, those layers bonded really well. You've got very nice layer stacking and really good adhesion throughout the print. So you're left with a part that's extremely strong. I, I don't think I could break this if I tried. It's a very strong part, which would probably be very similar to the specs of, of traditionally manufactured or injection molded parts. It makes for a, a very high quality and, and very robust part. And then here's a uh, really interesting test. This is a, a part that shows how the dimensional accuracy differs from one printer to the next. So this is a print of this object that we did on a different printer, not on the method. And when we try to fit these parts together, what you find is they, they really can't fit. They're just, they're just slightly off and you just cannot get these parts to go together no matter what you do. That very same part printed with default settings in ASA on the MakerBot Method X, and these parts smoothly slide into one another. It is a tight fit as it's intended to be, but once you get them lined up right, they slide right in together, perfect fit. So it's, uh, that was a really impressive show of how dimensionally accurate these parts can be compared to some of the other printers out there. Here's another example. This is a uh, circle type test. So this is testing for how accurately does the printer handle circles. And in this case you have concentric circles and these ridges need to fit into these slots. And again, here's a version that we printed on a, another brand of 3D printer and these parts will not fit into each other. We, I cannot get the, the two halves to slide in there. They just don't quite line up no matter what you do. Same part printed on the Method X. And as you can see, these parts slide in nicely, and more importantly, you can rotate them very smoothly, showing that those circles are indeed perfect circles all the way around. You don't have any kind of uh, ovalness uh, being introduced into those circles. So again, a very impressive showing of the dimensional accuracy of these printers. Uh, the Method and Method X both include uh, wireless and wired networking capabilities, of course, so you can send your jobs to it over the network and not only through your local network but also using the MakerBot cloud print services, you can slice your jobs in the cloud from wherever you are and send them to the printer. As long as your printer is online and in communication with the cloud, you can send your print jobs and monitor those print jobs from wherever you are. There is an onboard camera to help you monitor the, the prints as they're going and uh, you can get messages uh, about how that print is proceeding through the smartphone app, the MakerBot Connect app that's available as well. Now this printer is available in a number of different models. You have the Method and the Method X. The only difference between these two is the temperature limit of the active heated build chamber. The Method can go up to 60 degrees Celsius internally and the Method X can go up to 110 degrees Celsius allowing you to work with higher temp materials. Now, both of these printer models are also available in a carbon fiber edition. So you can get the Method Carbon Fiber Edition or the Method X Carbon Fiber Edition. And those are really geared towards people that are going to want to work with abrasive materials like MakerBot's nylon carbon fiber. And those printer versions include the Model 1C extruder so that you're ready to go with those materials. Now you can certainly just buy the Method or the Method X and then buy the Model 1C extruder separately, but the Carbon Fiber Edition has that bundled in so it can be a little bit more cost effective if you know that's the direction you want to go. Okay, so that is the Method and Method X series of printers. I hope you will check these out online at shop3duniverse.com, learn more about them, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see more videos like this when they're available. Thanks for watching.